Lovely, thank you. Uh, good morning, Mark. Nice to have this chance to have a chat with you. Um, the big news, of course, coming out of the club this week is that Dean Hoyle, um, the chairman, is taking a step back. Um, and I'm just interested to hear your thoughts on that initiative. Yeah, good morning, Catherine. Um, first of all, what I would like to say is um, when I come down to the club and the interviewing process, I met Lee Bromby and Dave Baldwin, who were two really uh, experienced people in the game, and they're two guys that I very, look for, very much look forward to working with. However, I did fly out to Spain to meet uh, Dean and his wife, and what I can say is they're just a lovely family. Um, it's amazing what they've done for the, the club and the town. Um, and I'm really proud to have been in a situation to go and meet them and be able to work for their, for their great club, you know. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, Dean's decided to not be involved in anymore, but we have to respect that. Uh, and I really uh, admire the man for all the hard work that he's done with his family for this club. Immediate implications for you then, does it make any difference in your day-to-day -day job, him not being around so much? Uh, not at all, because what happened was uh, Lee Bromby's really kind of the, the guy underneath him with uh, Dave Baldwin, and it's two very ex experienced people you're dealing with there. And I very much enjoy the day-to-day -day contact with the both of them, and their hands are on about everything, and uh, I've had a great support from them, you know. Um, so I'm looking forward to working alongside them and building a good future for the club. Tell us a bit about Dave Baldwin then. What's he like to work with? He's just a great guy. He's full of energy. He's full of experience. Um, he's a very clever man. Um, my lawyer that was actually involved in the, the negotiations, Andy Gross, he's a lawyer who looks after the biggest names in world football, you know, and he said to me, listen, Dave Baldwin's a serious operator and he's really good at his job. Um, so that was quite interesting because it's not like Andy Gross to speak about people in that manner. I think we've got a really good man here at the helm um, and he's going to support me and Lee and we're going to do a good job come the end of the season, keep this team in the league. Further down the road, it will inevitably mean a change of ownership. It doesn't look like that's going to be happening immediately, but is that a concern for you further down the line? You know, Any upheaval in, in terms of a club ownership can be a little disruptive, but is that something that you think about at all? No, not at all, Catherine, because we all know in this league that pretty much all the clubs are up for sale. Um, so we know the the situation with all the clubs and due to the finances and stuff. Um, but I will say again, we really, I really appreciate Dean, Hall and, Dean Hoyle and his family, what you've done for this great club. Um, and I'm just looking to build foundations now with the staff that I've got here to go and uh, get myself the situation and find mis myself in the table. Um, it's going to be done on a solid platform and solid foundations. And we've got the right people in here at the club that are working ever so hard to uh, move up this table. Let's talk about on the pitch then. Clean sheet at Middlesbrough. Perhaps wasn't the prettiest performance, but how important to get that clean sheet as something now to build on. Yeah, it was important. I mean, especially after Middlesbrough going to Wigan during the week and we watched them live and they won 4-1. Um, so we really frustrated them. But not only that, we also had really good chances to, to, to take and to win the game, you know, in our own right. So that's stuff that we've been working on this week in training. Dave Baldwin's been great with me in the respect as well. As that he said the remit is very much that I need to keep this team in the league this season. And uh, we've all got to work together as a group. We've got to roll our sleeves up. Uh, we know the situation we'll find ourselves in, but I've got a massive belief in this group of players that we could do it. How close are you now that you've been here a few weeks to knowing what your ideal starting eleven is? Yeah, I think you could see that. You know, we're starting to find consistency in the team lineups. We're starting to find uh, very much a solid performance week in week week out. Now, I find it quite interesting. I think that's the the only two or three clean sheets we've had the whole season um, in this period that I've been in. And that's pretty much the way I want to go with this team is that we're solid and hard to beat. I want the fans to get behind us. I want them to understand that we've got a young group here. It's not going to be as pretty as it has been in previous seasons, but we understand the magnitude of the situation we're in. And we've got to really roll our sleeves up and make sure we're aggressive in everything we do to go out there and put in solid performances. And solid performances start with getting clean sheets on board. And we know we've got the players on the pitch that could hurt the opposition when we do get chances, Catherine. What's the key to a clean sheet then? As you mentioned, they've been hard come by so far this season. Um, 
if you were going to give me like three things, what, yeah. what's the recipe for making sure you get a clean sheet in, uh, against any opponent? Yeah. It all comes down to the training, really. You know, the lads are training with a hell of a lot more intensity. They're aggressive in everything they do. We work a lot on distances between players and compact mission. I'm sure the players will have spoke to you guys about that as well. We, we, we train how we play. We train how we play. That's our motto. Everything we do is in a high tempo and that's why teams are finding it hard to play against us. I'm so disappointed as well because I feel at Rotherham and Preston, we should have took a minimum points out of that game as well, which we didn't. And we would have been sitting here in a far better position. But as I said, we, we believe in this group. The staff's working ever so hard. I'm getting all the support I need. And I know now how many points I need to stay in this league. There's 93 points to play for. And if you get 50 points on the board, it generally tells you that you stay in the league. And that's the remit I've got. And I'm more than capable of doing this with this group. And I'm looking forward to starting to get a win, especially at home in front of our fans here at the weekend. Yeah, which against Millwall, it, it, it's, no, you can't get away from the fact it's, it's a tricky game, isn't it? Uh, where do you think they're particularly dangerous? Just the same, Catherine. Like Hull, you know, we beat Hull at home and they went on and they've won, I think, their last two or three games. So everyone's capable of going on a run. Um, and I respect Millwall, they're an aggressive team and well-organised um, and that's pretty much what they'll be saying about us as well. We're a very well-organised team, we're hard to play through, we're hard to create chances against and we've shown that in the last weeks um, and we're going to improve it and get even better. Set pieces is something that they seem to have had a lot of success with this season. How do you make sure that you can combat that threat? I think they also need to combat us because we're very high in the league in terms of our set plays and we're very dangerous and we will be. We've got the best set play uh, deliverer of the ball in the whole league, in my opinion, in Sorba Thomas. And we've also got other guys there in the squad as well that are working hard to improve their quality in regards to their delivery into the box. And we've had goal goals from all different uh, personnel in the team from the set play. So whether it's the centre-backs, whether it was young Ben Jackson against Luton. So I think it's going to be one of those games where they've got concerns about us and we'll definitely need to be wide awake in regards to what they can do, Catherine. You, you don't shy away from the fact that the league position isn't good enough from where you want to be. How important is it over these next few games, particularly against Millwall and Sunderland, to get some points on the board, but to make sure that the gap between you and the teams just outside the bottom three doesn't get any wider. Yeah, I just touched on that with Hull, you know, we beat Hull and then they went on a great run, so we're more than capable of doing that as well. What I would say is that now that the expectations are away from last season and thinking that you're a team that's going to go up to the playoffs or the Premier League, it's not that group. It's a completely different ball game. We're in a transitional period. The club sold a lot of players and they're missing a lot of players through injury that have not even had one day on the training pitch. I'm looking forward to welcoming them back in the near future. And also my main focus is about the players that I have at the moment. And myself and my staff are working really hard with them on the training ground. They're training with a real desire, determination and everything they're doing is at a tempo and with intensity. And I'm looking forward to this at the weekend. I believe now, because of the current situation, that our fans know it's not going to be pretty football that's going to win us games. So they will accept that it's not going to be fast, free-flowing football, but they're going to have a team that really show that terrier spirit and grit and determination to go and get points on the board. That requires a lot of patience, though, doesn't it? Because fans, we as journalists as well, we want it to be pretty. We want there to be yeah. lots of goals. So that's quite hard to kind of reconcile, even if you are getting clean sheets, you know, to you sort of want the performances as well as the points. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I would say in regards to Middlesbrough. Like the performance was there because you don't go up there to a team that won 4 1 in the week and produce a performance like that away from home. So it shows me the capabilities and the confidence is there in the squad and the confidence also to get over and to goal scoring opportunities. And on another day, maybe the one uh, word he has with the rebound, you go and finish the game one or two now and you're sitting with another three points. But we have to keep improving. We know the situation we're in. We're going to really be uh, focused and determined. And uh, we're looking forward to Saturday. I know for sure our fans who are magnificent. They'll get behind this young team. And they'll push them all the way because we want to stay in this league. That's our main aim. And we've got to keep building this uh, momentum and making sure that we create a good uh, momentum at home where we have a lot of points on the board and the home, the stadium becomes like a very hard place to come for the opposition.
Perfect. Last one from me then, um, team news wise, um, we're all keen to see the return of Jonathan Hogg, Tino Angerin as well. Can you give us an update on squad in general? You know, are we likely to see either of them anytime soon? No, see? not at all. You're not likely to see them. Um, and that's unfortunate. But uh, the medical staff are working hard with them. They're monitoring it day by day. But I don't see them being there in the in the near future. You know, I think it's a little bit more long term in regards to all the players that have not had all the players that were probably the so-called starters at the start of the season. Um, but what I would say is a credit to the guys that are playing at the moment because although they weren't maybe starting games early on in the season, they've started to get points on the board in the small blocks since I've been in, which they didn't manage to do the whole 11 or 12 games at the start of the season. But we know that we have to continue to improve and that's why the training has been relentless. There's a real focus on everything we're doing. Um, every time we go out there in the training session, me and my staff know that we can't waste any time with anything. There's got to be a real focus on it that's relating to the game and the opposition what we're playing in the coming week. OK, so with Hogg then particularly, um, I know that Tino's got glandular fever, hasn't he? So yeah, that's a bit of an un, unpredictable beast. Um, Hogg, is it potentially not till after the World Cup that we might see him now? I don't know, to be honest. We uh, think he's uh, Hogg is a, is a great leader and he's had a, a little bit of a calf issue um, and he's a fantastic athlete. He trains uh, everything he does is with a real intensity and desire. Um, we're just trying to monitor it, you know, and the medical staff are keeping me informed that as we go. Me as a coach, I'm a big coach that believes in winning my duels, and I feel that when he comes into the team, our duels will go up absolutely double what they have been. Um, and that's that's the thing about it. But we can't complain, you know, that just gave other guys the chance to come in and show what they could do at the moment. And I think the young lads have showed that they're capable on uh, occasions of giving the teams that we're playing against the uh, problems. That's great. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Catherine. It was lovely to meet you today. You Cheers. And it up. Give us one second, we'll bring the mic over. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, just finishing off that. Hi, Mark. Um, you mentioned trying to sort of, you, in, you're in, you want intensity, you want players winning the duels. Is that sort of moving in a, a particular direction in your mind, the the focus on sort of those tackling stats, etc.? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big focus of mine. Um, and I feel that when you get uh, strong in that department, you will definitely give yourself a better chance of winning games in this league. Um, the players are more than capable of doing that as well, Stephen. They've shown it in the training and they've shown it in phases of the games. And that's why you do go out and get a clean sheet and you do get a clean sheet against Hull. Um, we are creating chances as well. It's probably just the final pass or the timing of the run and that stuff we've been very much focused on this week as well because we've had a clean week building up to the Millwall game. Has that been helpful to you, having that full week? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the training's been relentless this week. Um, the guys have been at it. They've been really uh, determined in everything they're doing. They've shown a good atmosphere as well. I think we're getting the point away to Middlesbrough as well. It breeds a lot more confidence in the group. Um, but as I said, when we play at home, I think we're a different animal. What I would say is that, and I have to, I'm not going to apologise for this. It's not going to be pretty. We've not got the, the players that you did last season. It's not going to be pretty in that respect at home. The fans need to understand the situation and where we are in the table. And it is a case of showing this terrier spirit, getting the sleeves really rolled up, a real determination and aggression in everything we do to go and win games at home. You changed shape last time. Do you feel like you've got good flexibility in the squad? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the flexibility has been shown and it's the confidence in what they're doing, the way they're changing the shape. We actually changed the shape twice during the game as well because we went to back five late on just to close out their wide players who were uh, getting a little bit of joy late on, which is normal when they're pushing. But due to that, we actually had two or three good counter situations against them. And as I said before, Wardy on another day uh, slots that side foot in and he gets his goal, you know, and we're away up the... We're way back down to Huddersfield with three points. Do you feel like uh, you, you can be getting more out of your strikers, Danny Ward, Jordan Rhodes? I think the two of them have been excellent, Stephen. The, the way that they're working, because as striker, it's not only about um, scoring goals. It's the most important thing. However, it's what they're bringing to the team. 
and getting that solid performance defensively, it's not just from the back four or the midfield, it's also from the front line and they work really hard the both of them. Uh, they work in the press for the team and they're taking everything on board and I'm sure that when a little bit of luck goes, they'll start finding themselves on the, the score sheet a lot more than what they have of recent. I, th I thought it was notable after the, the Borough game when you look at sort of the, the, the tackles won, the jewels, etc. It was all over the pitch. It wasn't just concentrated. That must be pleasing for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the lads are really capable, you know. It's just uh, putting it into practice day in, day out, um, increasing the levels. And uh, I've spoken about it before, very demanding. Um, they all know that. Uh, I really put a uh, huge pressure on them in the training and I demand a lot out of them and the, the training sessions are relentless. Um and we train how we play, you know, when we bring that into the games, we're going to be a really competitive side, which was shown in the, in the last weeks. Cool. That's all for me. Cheers, Thanks, man. Steve. Thank you. Stuart, welcome to you. Hello, Mark. How are you doing? Good morning, Stuart. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Right. Um, you mentioned a couple of times, you know, how the fans need to understand it's not going to be pretty. I just wonder how important it is in your job that the fans know how you're trying to go about things so that, they, so that you are working together. Yeah, listen, the fans have been amazing to me since I've come in here. They've supported me unbelievable and they're supporting this young group of players. The fact is, I've not got Louis O'Brien, I've not got Tuffo, I've not got the guy that went to Olympiacos and so on. I'm sitting with a young group and they're in transition and they're missing seven players, seven starters that were starting at the start of the season and they weren't winning games. We've now got clean sheets on board and we've got a solid foundation and platform to play from. The fans will get behind us because they know how much we're working and we know how much these young, this young group needs their backing and they'll back us. And I'm sure that we'll bring them points and we'll give them a good feeling to go home and enjoy their weekend this weekend. And you've obviously had a few home games now. So, some, some have gone better than others, but do, do, you, do you really feel the, how this stadium can, can help you? I've had two home games. Yeah. And obviously you won, you beat, you beat Hull, you, you lost to Preston, so you've kind of seen both sides. one now to Preston and the 1-4-1, one, one, the 1-4-1 one, one against Australia in the season. Yes. And I, didn't, I didn't have Van Yeren, I didn't have Hogg, I didn't have Matty Pearson, I didn't have these players and so on. That's the fact. The fact is the guys are a lot more competitive, they're keeping clean sheets and they're playing with a real determination. Mm. And I've got no doubts about them. I believe in this group of players and when I get the players back, uh, whenever they do come back in the near future, we will be a different animal. It's not going to be easy to play against us. Now while we're going to be in for a game at the weekend. Please believe me. But I say, the, the, the whole game, they obviously really got behind you. The, Pre the Preston game, they were pretty patient, really, considering it was, a, it was a difficult night against the top team. So does that just sort of show you what an advantage the stadium can be? It's going to be a massive advantage for us because we know when they get behind us and they're patient that the players will run through brick walls for them. And that's what they bring to the table. There's a brilliant stadium, it's a brilliant atmosphere, but just park the hangover from last season. The club's in a transitional period and we'll have to start climbing the table. I've not got the players I mentioned from last season. I'm dealing with a young group and it's my responsibility with my staff to improve them. And that's what we're doing at the moment. And and in a young group like this, you've, you, you've still got leaders, even with Jonathan Hogg injured, you've still got people like Tom Lees and, and, and Danny Ward, John, you've got quite a few leaders within the group. How important are they? Um, very important, instance? very important. And they've shown that in their performance levels and they've shown that the way they are about the group at the moment. They're always there, they're always supporting and what they are is they're very much leaders as well that lead by example. So they're different to what Hoggy is. Hoggy's a talker, he's vocal, he's very similar to the way I am as a head coach. They guys lead by example in everything they do, and they do everything with high quality. And that's so important for our young ones like Kamara, like Kisumu, and so on, Rodone, Jackson, to look how these players train day in, day out. That's why they've got all the appearances they have in the league. That's why they've had a very successful career. And when, you, when you're getting the platform that you're getting in games, do you need a bit more from your players off the bench in, in terms of the attacking side of the game. Obviously, it's difficult with Tino injured. That's one one option taken away from you. But do you, do you just need a bit more from those guys? No, not at all. They're giving me everything they've got. It comes down to quality at times. Tino's the best 10 in the league. No ifs or buts. So we'll welcome him back. He's a fantastic boy as well. Full of energy. He's a polite guy. 
he's got a very extravagant nature and he's a great kid and I really admire him for that because I love personalities. I'm used to working with him. I've worked with both things and people like that in Germany. I like these type of people. Um, and when they come into this group, they'll they'll implement the group and they'll take on board what we us as a staff want them to do. Um, and I'm sure they'll, they'll give a lot more confidence to the group as well because they'll give their individual class that they could bring. And obviously this World Cup has a strange effect on the on the season it sort of breaks it into a, a very clear block are you are you treating this run of games as a as a block and setting targets on it or is it just about you know we'll, we'll get we'll get mill all out of the way and then we'll think about the next one there's 93 points to play for and i need 50 points to stay in the league that's all i'm thinking on game for game mm -hmm. excellent brilliant well, thank you very thank much you. and good luck mark yeah thanks Stuart. alfie thanks Stuart. You. thank you Afternoon, Mark. How are you getting on? Afternoon, Alfie. Alfie, F. I'm saying morning. Well, I think it is still morning. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. Oh, we are still morning. Yeah. Sorry. Good morning. Sorry. I've been, I've been, I've been <laughs> a bit early today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a quick, just a quick one from me. I think it's been in the last two games. You, you've just made three substitutions over the the two games, and now you come into a period where you play five times across two weeks, up, up until the World Cup. How important are those? players that are just on, on the cusp of your starting eleven going to be for you? Yeah, it's important. You know, we've got a really big uh, volume of games coming up. So that's why we've put in, we're putting so much focus on the guys that have no, not been starting in the training, um, improving things with them, maybe looking at some of them playing in different positions and stuff so that they could adapt and be flexible and they're training really well. So everybody's really mu pretty much in my thoughts. Um, there's no any players that are kind of coasting what you talk about. They're all working so hard, and that's why I've gave everyone the chance, you know, when you're training well and you're doing everything with intensity, then you'll be involved in the group. But you've got to keep that up. You've got to keep the consistency. Um, also, because we've got a big volume of players that have been out from the very first day I arrived, and they, they're going to come in as, as well at one point and make the group even more competitive. Yeah, and no, I mean, three of the next five games are at home leading up and, until the World Cup. They were just just spoken about that that burst of games. How important is it that that this weekend against Millwall sort of sets sets the tone for what's to come in the next two weeks? Yeah, that's what we've been doing in, in, in all the games. We're trying to set the tone. You know, we've showed we could work with various formations. The young lads have showed that they could adapt and they could be creative. Um, we've had clean sheets. There was no clean sheets at the start of the season, you know, like, We've got to be honest, there's improvements for me, but I understand the frustrations because we want to go and win games. But it comes back to that this is not the team that got to the playoff final. This is a different team altogether. It's a transitional period for the group of players. It's a transitional period for the club as well because our lovely chairman has decided to sell the club. What we need to do is focus on game for game, focus on the performance and the training, show real discipline and aggression in everything we do so that we can start climbing the table. And my main aim is to keep this club, this brilliant club in the league. I've signed a three-year contract here. I'm very committed to everything I'm doing, and I've got a brilliant support network. If I didn't believe in the people here, I wouldn't have signed a three-year contract. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Mark. Thank Best of luck. Cheers, guys.